Welcome to this episode of Uplifting News Sleep Aid Daily, where we read you good news to fall asleep to. Today is Tuesday, April 14th, 2020. Our uplifting stories include a food delivery driver paying back doctors who saved him, a 93-year-old woman's plea for more beer gets answered by Coors, Male Taiwan officials wear pink face masks to show that pink is not just for girls. And how FaceTime is a silver lining for seniors. Now, breathe in. Breathe out. And relax as we dive into these stories. Our first story is from BBC, by Justin Harper. Food delivery driver paying back doctors who saved him. Doctors and nurses are people who saved me from cancer and gave me strength in the darkest time. I need to return the favor, says Li Yan, a food delivery rider based in Beijing. Mr. Lee was diagnosed with lymph cancer in 2003 when he was just 17 years old. He recovered from the disease and has been full of gratitude for the medical workers who nursed him back to health. With China in a national lockdown, food delivery firms found themselves in hot demand, providing meals for residents stuck at home to prevent the spread of coronavirus. As a delivery rider for Meituan, one of China's biggest food delivery firms, Mr. Li saw an opportunity to repay the medical professionals he admires by providing them with food and drinks as they worked tirelessly on patients across the city. Given my past experience, I felt I needed to do something for them in return during the virus outbreak, he adds. Beijing is a city of 21 million residents, and Mr. Li covers its Tongzhou district, where there are handfuls of hospitals with fever clinics, one of which is a designated hospital for COVID-19 treatment. Many might have concerns delivering for the hospital, but I've chosen to deliver for them more often. I just think of the local residents and medical workers who need us. I can't leave them being hungry. It's not for money. Before the outbreak in China, he delivered more than 50 orders on an average day. But during the first 10 days after the coronavirus outbreak in late January, the number of orders dropped to less than 20 as some restaurants were closed. The outbreak also coincided with the Chinese New Year period, which is normally a low season. By mid-February, when the situation was brought more under control and people's concerns and fears gradually began to ease, orders started to be restored. I can deliver over 40 orders a day now. During this time, Meituan brought in a contactless delivery option, which allowed food to be dropped off at designated points to avoid contact between customers and riders. When I called customers to explain, some initially didn't understand and wanted to cancel the order. But gradually, people grew more understanding and began to welcome the contactless approach. China was in lockdown for more than two months, although restrictions are now beginning to be lifted. It will still take some time before a sense of normalcy returns. I remember when the coronavirus first broke out. It was hazy for a few days in Beijing. Streets were empty and stores were closed. An ambulance or a delivery rider occasionally drove by. I felt like I was living in a different world. Mr. Lee says restaurants have started to reopen and people have begun coming back to work in the office since mid-February. Orders are still lower than normal, but are improving. I miss the hustling Beijing, which used to be filled with traffic. The days when I could smell car exhaust when I would stop at crossroads. The times when I had to walk all the way up to the sixth floor to deliver food. And even times when I was late for a delivery. When the virus first broke out, face masks and alcohol disinfectant were the most ordered items along with supermarket groceries, grains, rice, cooking oil, vegetables, fruits, and solid packaged food that lasts long. Orders often came in big sizes and transaction prices at around 200 yen to 300 yen on one order, approximately 28 US dollars. 
Being a food delivery rider, Mr. Lee feels he can not only give back to the medical community, but to the city's vulnerable too. I once received an order that came with a note saying the customer is an 82-year-old who lives alone and couldn't get downstairs to pick up the food, so the rider needs to enter the residential community and deliver the food to the door. I had to spend some time communicating with security and finally was allowed in. The door was open when I arrived and I put the bowl of wontons on the table. Tips have increased from happy customers during the pandemic as a result. Many more send me thank you notes in the Meituan app and tell me to take care. Mr. Lee has a new routine which involves lots of disinfecting and temperature checks. I get my temperature checked dozens of times every day now, before entering shopping malls, at restaurants, and returning home to the residential compound I live in. I also bring with me disinfectant sprays, a towel in my scooter, and use disposable gloves when delivering to areas with reported confirmed cases. While he's providing a vital service, is Mr. Lee worried about the risk of infection? I did have worries when the virus spread and was at its worst time here, but I feel like I've already been there given what I went through in the fight against cancer. I've learned to take things easy, look at the bright side of things, and always seek strength in a dark time. As long as I take precautions, masks, gloves, disinfectant and everything, and follow advice from disease control experts, I think the possibility of the virus is getting pretty low. And with a seven-month pregnant wife at home, Mr. Lee is looking forward to happier times. Our next article is from Wave 3 News by Shelley Silvestri. 93-year-old woman's plea for more beer gets answered by cores. Sometimes you just need a cold one. Or several. Olive Veronese is one of those people. And her plea for beer as she held a sign in the window of her Seminole, Pennsylvania home quickly went viral over the weekend. I need more beer, it read. As the New York Daily News reports, Veronese's request for the essentials has been answered. Molson Coors showed up at her home Monday afternoon with 150 Coors Light beers, and they weren't the only ones. Others also pitched in to get her more of what she needed. An employee of the Action Network, a sports media company, tweeted a new photo of the 93-year-old with an updated message on her whiteboard. Got more beer. This podcast is hosted on Anchor.fm. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. It's free. There's creation tools to allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will distribute the podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Our next article is from Taiwan News by Lila Liu. Taiwan government officials wear girly colored masks. Taiwan Central Epidemic Command Center, CECC, head Chen Xing Cheng, along with four other CECC officials, wore pink masks during Monday's press conference to demonstrate to young boys that the color is not just for girls. During Sunday's press conference, a reporter mentioned that many boys are refusing to wear pink masks to school due to peer pressure. As face masks are still being rationed, parents are worried that their kids might be infected by COVID-19 by not wearing the girly masks given to them, according to the report. In response to this concern, every male official at the press conference put on a pink mask. Chen warmly stated, It's fine for a man to wear pink, and assured viewers that pink is for everyone. He added that his favorite cartoon as a child had even been The Pink Panther. Everyone can wear any color of mask. Pink is actually a good color, Chen concluded. Our last article is from the Washington Post by Sydney Page. 
For seniors, a silver lining. The FaceTime is really quite unbelievable to me. Under normal circumstances, Jacqueline Kimmelsteel, a 92-year-old Holocaust survivor, never would have experienced the thrill of watching her great-grandson learn to ride a bike. Overwhelmed with delight, she watched as three-year-old Judah confidently rode down the block, waving at her when he passed by from his grandparents' home in Hudson Valley, New York. Although she wasn't there in person, it sure felt like I was. Kimmel Steele said from her tidy dwelling on the eighth floor of the Riverwalk Retirement Community in the Bronx. For Kimmel Steele and many other seniors, one of the unexpected silver linings of COVID-19 has been discovering the untapped joy of video calling, especially at a time when in-person interaction is strictly off limits. In fact, Kimmel Steele says she's communicating with her family much more frequently than she did before the pandemic. The novelty of video calling wore off long ago for most people across the country. But for this group of seniors, isolating in their New York retirement community, it's a small miracle. Eleanor Winehouse, 90, who lives at the Hebrew home at Riverdale, which is next to Riverwalk, said, like many others there, she's now video chatting with her family several times a week. For her, the video calls are brand new. I'm quite old fashioned, so the FaceTime is really quite unbelievable to me, Winehouse said. Her daughter, Holly Cicero, 60, says she is thrilled to be able to arrange calls with her mother, who has been difficult to reach as she doesn't own a cell phone. During the pandemic, people have been concerned about their elderly relatives and wanting to check in more often than usual. I get off FaceTime and I immediately text my siblings to tell them that mom has not looked better in years, Cicero said. Staff at Riverwalk in the Hebrew home have instituted various services to help residents cope with the coronavirus pandemic and keep occupied while being isolated. The most popular is the video visiting program. We've distributed iPads to the staff to help residents with Skype and FaceTime calls throughout the day, said Daniel Raingold, president and CEO of River Spring Health, which operates Riverview and the Hebrew Home. It's really exciting for them, many of whom have never used this type of technology to talk to their families and see them in real time. In recent weeks, staff at Riverwalk and the Hebrew Home have been working to protect nearly 900 residents from the deadly virus, which has crept into more than 140 nursing homes in the United States. As cases of COVID-19 surge, long-term care homes and retirement facilities have faced an agonizing dilemma. Elderly people are most likely to die of infected by the virus, and yet they are also most likely to suffer from long-term solitude and social isolation. Protecting our residents is something we do every day, Raingold said, but we've never had a situation where all the people we're taking care of need to be protected all at once, all the time. Every staff member and delivery person must have their temperature taken before entering the premises. No visitors are allowed, meals are prepared to individual rooms, and all regular activities are canceled. With these and other sweeping restrictions in place, residents are spending all of their time alone. Enter the video visiting program. Some of our residents are actually seeing their family members more than they have in the past, said Wendy Steinberg, vice president of communications at the Hebrew home. In fact, the number of visits during the pandemic is roughly double what it was before. Prior to COVID-19, the home typically had between 100 and 150 in-person visitors per week. Now, more than 250 video visits are being facilitated in the same time frame, which doesn't account for the many residents who have their own devices to make video calls. The irony is that someone who could only visit mom on a Sunday is now visiting seven days a week, said Raingold. Though we're physically distancing, we're trying to increase social connectedness. Daily FaceTime calls between Kimmel Steele and her family are life-changing, she said. It's wonderful. I feel like I'm right there with them. It's very therapeutic, actually. Most of Kimmel Steele's extended family is isolating together in upstate New York. To be so far from my Oma right now is really hard, said her granddaughter, Rebecca Kimmel Steele Kivelson, 34. She knows Kimmel Steele sits alone in her 450 square foot unit day after day. Sometimes I feel like the ceiling is going to fall on top of me, 
Monica Mostiel said. When loneliness strikes, she joins her family virtually as an active participant in a day of bread baking, birdhouse building, thumb sucking, tamper tantrums, and memories being made. This is magic to me, she said. Now that she's gotten the hang of it, Kimmel Steele plans to continue using FaceTime even after the pandemic is over. Of course, I'm completely frightened by the virus. Who isn't? said Kimmel Steele. But I'm very grateful. I know I'll never be truly alone again. That's it for tonight. If you have uplifting news to share, please send it to unsadpodcasts at gmail.com. That's U-N-S-A-D podcast at gmail.com. Thank you for joining us at Uplifting News Sleep Aid Daily. Stay safe and stay inside. Mm -hmm.